What's up, everybody? Welcome into the College Football Recruiting Show. I'm Grace Remington with Blair Angulo. And before we get started, you already know what to do. Like this video. We're trying to get to 100 likes today. Subscribe to the channel and jump in the chat so we can get to your questions by the end of the show. All right, Blair, let's get to those headlines. Earlier today, Georgia landed a commitment from three-star tight end Colton Henrik. With his commitment, the Dogs have leapfrogged Michigan to take the number one spot in the 2024 team recruiting rankings. Blair, how likely are the dogs to stay at the top? Grace, it's early, but I mean, I don't know. Are we calling the race now? Uh, it's, re it's looking really good for the Bulldogs to finish with the best class this year. And as spots begin to fill up, don't be surprised to see Georgia go on a nice little run heading into the season, and that should keep them atop the chart. Oregon landed a trio of commits over the last few days. Four stars wide receiver Dylan Gresham and defensive lineman Zadavian Sims announced their commitments to the Ducks on the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. Quarterback Michael Van Buren also joins the class, which now ranks fifth in the team recruiting rankings with 14 commits. Blair, what's your reaction to Dan Lanning's big weekend? The quack attack is single-handedly carrying the Pac-12 in the team recruiting rankings. No other program in the conference is within the top 30, and the closest school to them right now is Colorado at number 34 nationally. Gresham and Sims were really good additions, but I thought it was super important for them to get Van Buren to pair with Luke Moga, who is a great athlete but still needs time to improve. So Dan Lanning is certainly rolling. The quack attack, I like that. Penn State, Nebraska, and Duke landed their 2024 quarterbacks with Daniel Kalen flipping from Mizzou to the Huskers, Ethan Grunkemeyer picking the Nittany Lions, and Tyler Cherry choosing the Blue Devils. Blair, which fit do you like the best here? I think Grunkemeyer to Penn State, our colleague Alan True describes him as a smart and polished passer. That's exactly the type of signal caller that seems to thrive for the Nittany Lions. He's steady, he throws with good rhythm, he anticipates well, and he has all the makings of being a really productive player in the Big Ten. Four-star offensive tackle Manasseh Itete announced a final five of Florida State, Oregon State, USC, Utah, and Washington on Sunday night. The Seminoles, currently the crystal ball leaders. Blair, what kind of player are these schools fighting for? A really raw offensive lineman, tremendous upside and potential. Itete is still a major work in progress after coming over from Africa, and he's still learning the game of football. It will take him some time to develop, but the scouting department loves all the traits that could make him one of the more talented offensive linemen in this class. And four-star quarterback Isaac Wilson announced the top six of UCLA, Arizona State, Utah, BYU, Oklahoma State, and Arizona. Wilson has taken official visits to Utah and Arizona. And Blair, you wrote that it appears he's finished with his trips. How quickly do you think this recruitment ends? I do think this recruitment is approaching the finish line, Grace, and the buzz appears to be with the nearby Utes, who would like nothing more than back up their best ever recruiting class with a coveted four-star quarterback from just down the road. They, he can help them recruit more talent this cycle, and, and I'd be surprised if we reach the month of June and Isaac Wilson has not yet revealed his choice. And we got some big news here at 24-7 Sports. We have updated our recruiting rankings. You can go check them out online at 247sports.com. Our director of scouting, Andrew Ivins, here to break it all down. Now, Andrew, before we get into specific players, let's go over first. This is the first update since mid-March. There was some movement in the group of 32 five-stars, but most of the changes coming from numbers 33 to 247 why is this update necessary and what has changed in the recruiting world to help you and the team better evaluate these guys? Well, Grace, we're calling it kind of a, a tweak. Uh, back in March, it was a full-on overhaul, right? Uh, coming out of everyone's junior seasons. Now here, uh, right as we approach the summer months, we just wanted to make a few changes and everyone's like, hey, what, what's happened the past few months? Well, uh, we've had spring football in, in a few states, you know, Georgia, Florida, Texas, Louisiana. We've had full padded practices. We've had full padded games, full padded scrimmages. So all that is some context. I've been out on the road. Uh, the rest of my team's been out of the road. And then we've also had showcases and college camps uh, all around the country. And every weekend, it seems like there's some different event. We're getting new data points from that, new testing, um, you know, new uh, eyes on evaluations. All that stuff's important. It's a big country. We're not going to see everyone. So uh, anytime we can get that in-person evaluation, it is huge. And then finally, you know, track season is wrapping up uh, around the country. We've had a ton of state meets. 
Um, normally kids are going to run their best times at the end of the season. So we've seen that all that has gone into this update. And then guess what, June, we're going to have even more camps, right? We're going to have the OT7 finals out in Los Angeles. We're going to have the Elite 11 finals in Los Angeles as well. And then we have all these college satellite camps and elite camps. So that's all part of the evaluation process. Yes, film is king, but sometimes the measurements, the track times, the multi-sport, all that plays into this. Andrew, as Grace mentioned, a lot of the movement that came in this update comes outside the uh, the five star range, and there are 25 new four stars in the top 24/7. A lot of prospects to go through, but who are some names that really stood out to you that were maybe outside the top 24/7 that made the jump? Well, let's start with Courtney Crutchfield, wide receiver that's committed to Arkansas. Our team loves this guy on offense. I actually think he could play defense. He's a three-phase player. He's also got some basketball scholarship offers. I just call him a mismatch out on the perimeter, and I love the fact that he's going to go play for Sam Pittman in the Razorbacks. You know, they want to pound the football, run behind that big offensive line, but this is a guy that can win one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Uh, really big fan of him. We went back and forth all morning trying to find a player comparison. Me and the scouting team, Van Jefferson, was tossed out there. Uh, and I like that. Van Jefferson, who played at Florida, played at Ole Miss, now with the Los Angeles Rams. He was also a Hooper in high school. Chris Cole's another guy that we need to highlight, a linebacker out of Virginia. I just saw him two weeks ago uh, at, at, in the DMV. Uh, and this is this is a guy that is, that is big and he can run. Um, you know, he's got some hurdle backgrounds, but you put on the tape, right? So you know he's got speed. And we just love the fact that he's a face-up tackler that can wrangle ball carriers down um, in space. And with the way football has trended, we know that teams are trying to get as athletic as they can. It's a matchup game. And Chris Cole is someone that could play all three downs. A former safety has moved closer to the box. And the cool nugget with Chris Cole is he's actually related to Bob Marley. That's one of his relatives. He's also related to Rohan Marley, obviously Bob Marley's kid who played at the University of Miami. So like that about Chris Cole. Luke Reynolds, another guy we need to highlight, Penn State tight end commit. You know, we just saw in the NFL draft uh, how many tight ends came off the board there in, in day two and day three. Three. And what they all had in common is a lot of them played other positions when they were in high school. A lot of them were multi-sport guys. Luke Reynolds, uh, he, he's someone that, uh, you know, plays basketball. He was a quarterback last year. He tested off the charts a few weeks ago, 4-5 in the 40-yard dash, 4-2-9 in the short shuttle. We had questions about him as a pass catcher, exceeded expectations when Brian Doan, our Northeast analyst, saw him in person. You saw that player co comp up there for Luke Schoonmaker. Cooper Patagna was at Michigan uh, when the Wolverines recruited Luke Schoonmaker. He sees a lot of the same here in Luke Reynolds. And then finally, Nitro Tuggle, the last guy I want to bring up. This guy is a blur on tape. He zigs and zags his way around defenses. He's done it uh, the past few years up in Indiana he's transferring into IMG Academy for his senior season we expect him to have a big year he's got rubber bands for knees right after the catch he's slippery he's elusive he has great vision he can find the end zone I think he's a guy that can make an impact in the return game another guy we kind of struggled to find a player NFL comp for I said Kadarius Tony remember him at Florida and just how he would take a short pass and turn it into a monster chunk play or a large gain Nitron Tuggle someone that's going to be able to move the chains and look Georgia just got Dylan Rayola you brought up the tight end they got number one class this is someone that's probably been not talked about enough and someone else that has tested tested really well four or five on the lasers in the 40 yard dash four three six short shuttle both those times show up on tape all right, rubber bands for knees and a name like Nitro. I am officially intrigued, Andrew. Uh, but we're going to look at the entire group of 32 five stars. We'll start at the bottom with 32 through 27. The number two quarterback in the country, Jaden Davis, at 29 overall. But, Andrew, there actually wasn't much movement, not just among the quarterback group, group in the top 32, but the entire top 247. Why have these guys stayed pretty consistent? Well, we we made the decision, Grace. You know, the Elite Eleven Finals is coming up here uh, the third week of June, and and obviously that's a, a key evaluation point for these quarterbacks. You know, we've seen a lot of them in different settings, whether that be a seven on seven tournament. Some of them we've seen them play games. We've seen them at camps, the Elite Eleven Regionals, and we kind of have 
each have our own theories, but we're trying to get this uh, to a consensus in the quarterback rankings, how we want to stack them. And the decision was made, hey, let's not make too many changes and, and, and tweaks right now with that quarterback order. Let's wait till after the Elite 11 because we'd hate to you know, jumble it all up and then have to change it a month later. So the quarterback movement is coming after the Elite 11 finals. We're going to do another 2024 update uh, at the end of June, right before July 4th. And that's when we're going to kind of move some of these guys around. Jaden Davis, obviously, he's headed to Michigan. We like him a lot. Uh, but there's some guys knocking on the door behind him. C.J. Carr, who is headed to Notre Dame. You know, he has looked excellent multiple times in person. Uh, you also got D.J. Lagway out there who has an, a very intriguing profile, uh, you know, has a super high ceiling. Uh, Air Nolan, who's headed to Ohio State. We'll see who makes it into the Elite 11 finals, but that's when the movement's going to come after that. And again, it's not it's not the final end-all, be-all how they do out there in L.A., but that is important just because you get to see all these dudes side by side. How do they react? Do they trade throw for throw? Uh, and we're looking forward to that. Moving up the list, let's move on to uh, 26 through 21. This group includes the number one tight end in the country, Landon Thomas, currently committed to Florida State. You've also got the number one offensive tackle in the class, Brandon Baker, and defensive lineman Justin Scott. Justin Scott's now one of two risers into the top 32, jumping 14 spots to number 21 overall. What have you seen from Justin Scott, Andrew, that's helped him rise to five-star status in this latest update? Oh, you see that Kristen Wilkins player comparison out there. That's a that's a guy that can dent protection in the middle. And I think the same can be said about Justin Scott and Blair, if we're going to be honest. You know, we, we moved a defense alignment out of the top 32. We wanted to get another big body in there. And as we met and discussed uh, kind of this top group of players, Justin Scott was the one that had the most momentum behind him. We still don't have a ton of verified information on Justin Scott, but you dig into the player, the profile. We found some basketball footage. This is a kid that gets it done on the AAU circuit. Uh, basketball was his first love, and that's important. In the most recent NFL draft, out of the 259 uh, guys that were selected, over 100 of them were basketball players, and a lot of them were prolific hoopers. And I'm not saying Justin Scott could have played at the mid-major level, uh, but he can attack the rim. He can get up and down uh, the hardwood. We also love the two-way snaps. So this was kind of a case where, hey, we're, we're sliding the guy out and Ernest Wylor, uh, who hasn't put, he was dealing with a little bit of an injury. We wanted to get another big body in there. Justin Scott, uh, he's got the measurables. He moves really well. So we felt comfortable getting him up into that top 32. And it's easy to see why the best of the best are recruiting him. Miami's in there. Uh, Michigan's in there. Ohio State's in there. USC's in there. Everyone wants a piece of Justin Scott. A big athletic body and obviously one of the fast risers in this class now reaching five-star status. Moving on to 20 through 11, Andrew in the top 24-7 rankings. Four wide receivers headline this group as well as the nation's top safety and five-star K.J. Bolden. In the middle, you got number two linebacker in the class, Justin Williams. And as we mentioned with Justin Scott, he is one of the two risers into the top 32. Williams is the other. The Texas native rose 37 spots since the last update in March. What have you been able to see from Justin Williams to make him get such a big leap into five-star status? Blair, I talked a little bit about it with Chris Cole, right? It's a matchup game. You want your second level defenders or your guys in the middle to be able to run and, and cover. And Justin Williams, man, he has a ton of range. He's super fast. Uh, after we came out with our full field 32 rankings back in March, literally, I think that weekend, Justin Williams shows up to a camp rips off a 4-4-4 in the 40-yard dash on the Lasers. That's one of the best times out there, regardless of position for this 2024 cycle. So he can run, right? And then you put on the tape, uh, he can crash between the gaps. He can get outside, run the alley, make stops out there. So we love that on him. Probably a guy that initially needed to be in the 32. I think ultimately he's going to be in the conversation for that number one linebacker spot. We really just kind of wanted to shrink the gap between Sammy Brown and Justin. Justin, and that's what we did with this update. Uh, Justin, a guy with over 100 tackles there as a junior. Again, someone that can play fast. Uh, and, you know, his profile, his testing backs up what we saw on film. So big fans of Justin, and that's why he moved up in the rankings. All right, folks, before we advance to the top 10, 
you're already watching, so you might as well hit thumbs up on this video. Help us get to 100 likes today. Jump in the chat, send us your questions so that Blair can answer them at the end of the show. All right, Andrew, let's take a look at our top 10 recruits. Dylan Raiola does indeed remain the top prospect. Right behind him at number two is Ohio State wide receiver commit Jeremiah Smith. And Williams and Winery is the top defensive player at number three. However, we have a newcomer to the top 10 here, and that's defensive lineman Aiden Breland at number six out of modern day. He rises 19 spots from number 25, where he was in March. Andrew, what about his game pushed you and the rankings team to make him the nation's number two D lineman? Well, Grace, I'll say this. You saw that top 10 there on the screen. I mean, these are the prospects we feel the best about right now, all right? We're still learning about this class. Those 10 are our kind of guys. And Aiden Breland is someone that's had a ton of supporters and fans behind the scenes when it comes to the scouting department. I think we've been trying to get everyone on the same page and uh, the more exposure some of our analysts have had to Aiden Breland, who really didn't play a ton as a junior there at Matter Day. Uh, everyone's now on board, right? This is one of the top uh, trench players in the class. He's explosive. Uh, he can get after the quarterback. You know, he also does a little bit of track and field. Uh, I think last month he had a discus toss of 180 feet, which is an excellent marker for a player his size. He's a guy that can move around, and and I think he's pretty scheme versatile. He can be one gap, two gap, whatever you need, but he can get after the quarterback there in the middle. So we're big fans of Aiden Breland. Excited to see what he's going to do here as a senior for Matter Day, which is absolutely loaded across the board. I mean, you want to talk about an all-star team, I think Matter Day has a case for it. I don't know what the Max Preps guys are going to do with their rankings, but on paper, uh, Matter Day looks to be a, a force to be reckoned with, and Aiden Breland is the anchor of that defense right there in the middle. Andrew, Dylan Rayola stays at number one, recently committed to Georgia, and now he's recruiting a lot of his peers in that top ten to join him in Athens. But when you look at that list, Jeremiah Smith right behind him, you know, it was he the only one under consideration uh, to potentially, you know, vie for that number one spot? Yeah, I, I'm going to be honest. I mean, there was a ton of debate behind the scenes about what to do at number one and, and really what to do with that top five. I think Jeremiah Smith, you know, for some of our analysts, he's the highest graded player here in the 2024 cycle. I think he's also might be the safest player. And I, t I mentioned the state track meets. Jeremiah Smith just won a pair of gold medals uh, in Florida. He, he won the 110 hurdle, 400 meter hurdle. You know, people always want to question his speed, right? Because he's got the size, he's got the ball skills, he's got the production uh, playing stiff competition down in South Florida. But, you know, how fast is he? And I think the hurdles uh, are a pretty unique event, right? You got to be pretty athletic to do that and you know he podiums twice and not only podiums but uh, again is standing where the first place person is so there was some conversation ultimately we decided to stay with dylan rayola for now you know our rankings are going to reflect the nfl draft you have to go back to 1996 that's the last time a wide receiver went number one in the nfl draft that was Keyshawn johnson so we'll see how this shakes out but it, you know I, I can say this with some confidence, and I think a lot of people on my team, Cooper Batagna, he would agree. And I think Jeremiah Smith is the safest prospect right now in the 2024 cycle. The guy we feel the best about uh, and a, a exceptional talent, generational type of talent. All right, great stuff, Andrew. Andrew and the rankings team working around the clock. Uh, to put these rankings out there. And for more from him and Cooper Patagna, check out the Football Recruiting Podcast. It comes out every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They are breaking down the biggest storylines on the trail. You can download or listen wherever you get your pods. And of course, there's some more recruiting scoops we have to get to. So let's bring in our director of recruiting, Steve Wiltfong. Good to see you again. We'll start in Athens, where Georgia held its scavenger hunt. Dylan Rayola was there, but he had to recruit out of town as well. His main target... Five-star linebacker Sammy Brown couldn't make it on campus. And, Steve, there's a really interesting story. Why? Tell us what went down. Well, one of his main targets, it was a loaded recruiting weekend at Georgia. More on that later. But one young man who was not able to make it was 24-7 Sports' number one ranked linebacker, Sammy Brown. I talked to Sammy's dad this weekend, and he told me that he told his two sons, Sammy's got a little brother who's a promising young prospect, he said, I told the boys there's a tree coming down and I'm not toting it. And uh, Sammy and the family, they're going to be taking official visits the next five weekends, beginning with Tennessee, 
this coming weekend. And that, that, I think that tree, they got tired of seeing it up. You know, they're busy with sports. Sammy goes from football to wrestling to track. This was the weekend to do some yard work. So uh, Dylan Rayola, uh, they wanted to get a little throwing session in. Jefferson High School made the most sense, right? Let's get Sammy Brown out there. They, they meet at Jefferson High School. You got Jeremiah Smith. Uh, uh, um, you got... Uh, all the prospects on campus this weekend uh, going out to Jefferson High School to throw. Uh, Ryan Williams and, and uh, Sammy Brown was out there, got to hang out with him for about an hour. He talked about the great relationship he's formed with, with Dylan Rayola. Uh, Sammy Brown's going to be back at Georgia the second weekend in June for his official visit. Um, and, and I like where the Bulldogs stand with him going into his five official visits, but certainly a lot of competition with Clemson, Tennessee, Oklahoma, and Ohio State. Steve, to follow up on that story, a lot of crazy things happen in the world of recruiting. We had Cormani McLean sleep through his alarm on signing day. We all remember that. Lots of recruits will say they have homework or a test to skip out on a visit. But now we have Sammy Brown acting like yard work is more important than visiting the national champs. Where does this wow. story stack up with others you've heard on why a recruit had to miss a visit? Well, I'm not so sure Sammy Brown would tell you that moving that tree was more important than George's scavenger hunt. I think that was a decision that came from a higher power. Uh, uh, certainly, Come hey, on, look, as, as, <laughs> hey, we have sons so they can help us do yard work. It's just <laughs> nature taking its course. And, you know, Mike Brown uh, has two very strong young kids that can help tow the tree and it had to get done. <laughs> Steve, I'm counting the days until uh, my little son can come and help me do some stuff in the backyard as well. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, on campus, though, that a player that did make it was K.J. Bolden, the five-star safety from the state of Georgia. You put in a crystal ball for the Bulldogs. What has you leaning with Bolden, you know, ending up with the back-to-back -back champ, Steve? Yeah, well, we've talked about it before on various whip arounds and recruiting shows that we thought that Georgia was the team to beat in this recruitment and coming out of another visit. I like my crystal ball. When users come to our website, it reflects what I think the current pulse is. And I think Georgia has set the bar going into official visits. Now you're going to have trips to Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State, and Auburn. So there is a lot of competition. There's a lot of schools that KJ Bolden likes. But I just think Georgia, the re relationship with Kirby Smart and Fran Brown, and then this experience. He said this was an experience this weekend was one to remember. I was able to see the plan that Coach Smart has and also spend time with the other 2024 commits. I think he vibed with Dylan Rayola and those guys, and he likes what Georgia's all about, likes the winning, and, and said that he thinks that if he goes there and plays alongside some of the guys committed, they could add to the trophy case over the next three to four years. But uh, I, I think he feels like he fits in well with his peers, loves the staff, and I think Georgia has set the bar going into trips to Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, and Auburn. So we'll see what happens moving forward, but I like Georgia. All right, we talked last week about how Dylan Rayola's commitment could help attract other top offensive players to Athens, and we're already seeing that happen. This past weekend, Georgia hosted top 2024 wide receiver Jeremiah Smith and the top 2025 receiver Ryan Williams. Both are committed elsewhere, with Smith to Ohio State, Williams to Bama. So, Steve, what's the latest on these two? Yeah, and as we talked about, those guys got to throw passes with Dylan Rayola at Jefferson alongside to Kobe White and Ike Carr, receivers committed to Georgia, tight end Colton Heinrich, who committed to Georgia this morning. And uh, I think that Jeremiah Smith and Ryan Williams both felt like they really fit in with their potential peers at Georgia. Now, talking specifically about Jeremiah Smith, you talk to people that spent time with him in Athens this weekend for his official visit. And they're optimistic that Georgia has a chance to ultimately flip him from Ohio State. But until we see someone actually flip a receiver from Brian Hartline, Ohio State's receivers coach, their offensive coordinator, who does a great job of not only uh, developing players, they just had the number one receiver taken in this past draft. They're going to probably have the number one receiver taken in the next year's draft in Marvin Harrison Jr. They have guys performing at a high level in the NFL right now from Brian Hartline's stable. And I talked to another source that said, hey, I think unless something happens with Brian Hartline, he still sticks. But the, again, a lot of people that spent time with Jeremiah Smith and his parents this weekend at Georgia think that Georgia uh, has a great shot here. And as we said last week, that's the school that I view as the biggest threat to Ohio State 
You still got Florida and some other schools trying to chip away as well. He's going to be back at Ohio State in a couple weeks. He's going to Florida the first week of June. Ohio State after that, so we'll see what happens coming out of those officials. But they definitely had a good time at Georgia. And then Ryan Williams, longtime commit to Alabama, said it was an enjoyable week. Uh, uh, liked getting around the guys. Uh, uh, liked uh, how involved Kirby Smart was in, in everything. In fact, that blew him away. He was like, I mean, he was involved in everything. So Kirby Smart uh, made an impression, and he talked about the standard at, at Georgia and the alumni there. So he's very familiar with Georgia and uh, obviously is giving Georgia a look as he continues through his process, uh, which is still kind of in the beginning for him. He's 2025. Steve, let's stay in the SEC and head to College Station as Texas A&M hosted five-star defensive lineman Williams and Winery. What did he have to say about his stay in College Station and where the Yaggies fit into his recruitment? Well, this is a visit that he's been wanting to take for a while. Look, we've talked about we love Tennessee's position in this recruitment. We think Oklahoma's up there. We're not sleeping on Dan Lanning in Oregon with Dan Lanning being from Lee's Summit. And then Georgia's got a puncher's chance. He's got an official scheduled there. And then uh, Mizzou's been coming hard. But A&M's a school that he's been wanting to get to. And he finally makes it down there. And he says they're definitely contender. He enjoyed it a lot. He's, he's got connections with Terry Price and Elijah Robinson, their two-headed monster on the defensive line. He's even got a connection with Bobby Petrino. He talked about if he, know, if he goes there, he knows he'll get developed uh, as a person and a player. He likes their system, likes their track record of development at Texas A&M. And he said he's going to go back. He's looking to get back to their pool party barbecue in July. An official visit is in the mix as well. And as you guys know, they're not limited to just five. And even though the schools are limited to how many official visitors they can bring in, you can normally find an extra official in your back pocket for williams Winery if he wants to come in. He's a guy I wouldn't be surprised if he takes more than five officials before he makes a decision. A&M trending for one of those. All right, official visits not limited. And you know what else is not limited, people? Likes on this video. There you go. Wilt Fong's doing the like dance. Now you have to throw us a thumbs up. <laughs> we need a gift for like that. We... I was like number 49 on this video. Where are we at? Oh, yeah, we need a producer. Can someone tell me where? We're at 83. Look at, wow, Steve, awesome. It's the dance. We need a, we need a gift of that dance, please. Uh, all right, on the West Coast, USC hosted five-star Bryant Wesco for his first official visit. Clemson, LSU, Oklahoma, Tennessee, and TCU are also in the mix. What are his thoughts on the Trojans, and where do they stand in his recruitment? Well, this is a school that you weren't hearing a lot about early on for Bryant Wesco. You were hearing a lot about Oklahoma, of course, been there many times. Uh, Clemson is a school where they love the culture and the fit, had a great visit there. TCU uh, and what Coach Kelly's done at the position with guys like Quentin Johnson and then obviously the season they had. But USC is a place that they're excited about. Kicked off the official visits for him, went out there. Loved Lincoln Riley's plan for the program. Loved Dennis Simmons and his track record of player development. That is one of the biggest components in this process is, is who has the track record, who can prove that they are the best man to develop him. He's got high goals uh, in football, but certainly in the business world as well. So what USC offers on and off the field in that business capacity was also exciting. You know, they got several other visits coming up. You know, many of the schools we mentioned, LSU also in there, Tennessee also in there, but USC impressed academically culturally and coach Riley's vision for continued excellence was his father's words. And, and again, they really like coach Simmons. So USC uh, put their best foot forward this weekend as they hosted some elite players. USC is trying to close on Oregon, which is up to number five nationally. They had the top two players from the state of California up in Eugene. Uh, that would be Brandon Baker, the offensive tackle, and Aiden Breland, who we discussed with Andrew Ivins earlier on the show. Steve, the Ducks have a ton of momentum right now on the recruiting trail. Are they starting to really make moves with, with these two West Coast five stars after this latest visit? Well, I know that you are you have intel on these recruitments, and absolutely, Oregon is near the top for Brandon Baker and Aiden Breland. They've been regulars in Eugene. This was their second time in the last month 
on campus. Brandon Baker talked about the energy Coach Lanning brings and the strong passion that he has for this program. And, and he can just feel that, uh, you know, coming off Coach Lanning, that they're going to be a big time program soon. And he says he sees that building with the season they had and with the way they're recruiting and hitting the portal. And then, you know, Aiden Breland said he had a great time. He feels at home. And Eugene also talked about Coach Lanning and his coaching staff taking the time to explain their plan for him as far as player development. He saw what Lanning helped build at Georgia uh, and, and sees it brewing at Oregon. And just Tosh Lupoy, Tony Teodi, uh, he talked about the, the genuine family feel he gets from them as well. And so those guys are very comfortable at Oregon. And their teammate, receiver Jack Ressler, uh, I crystal balled him to Oregon as well recently. I love where the Ducks stand with him at the receiver position. They have three receivers they love in the fold, and I think they would love to add Jack Ressler as the slot guy to complement Dylan Grisham and, and uh, Jordan Marshall and, and, and Tysir Denmark. And we'll end here with another big commitment in SEC country over the weekend. Alabama lands in-state four-star defensive lineman Jeremiah Beeman. See what makes him such a force on the line of scrimmage and what is he bringing to the tide? Well, 10 sacks, three interceptions as a junior, two-way guy, six foot five, 270 pounds, extremely long, very high ceiling. This is a young man that has barely tapped into what he is physically and i talked to his trainer leonard stevens yesterday uh about the commitment and he said that this is a young man that's in the facility every day never satisfied with his last accomplishments so he brings the right dna that nick saban looks for in a prospect this young man's hungry to be the best player he can be in alabama we've certainly seen them develop guys like that and he trains at the same facility as dj dale and Byron Young. So they're very familiar with the Alabama program. I know Georgia's got the number one recruiting class in the country right now, but Alabama, they have the number one class in my favorite metric, pound for pound, highest ranking per commit. That's where Alabama stands, number one. They have a special class brewing as well in Tuscaloosa. And this young man, Jeremiah Beeman, is the latest to join the fold. All right, great stuff as always, Steve. Thank you. And don't miss any of our great content here on the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel. Turn those noties on for the best analysis in the game, plus live commitments from your favorite top recruits. You can only find it here, 24-7 Sports. EA Sports College Football will make its return in 2024. And according to ESPN's Michael Rothstein, real players will appear in the game. That's all thanks to NIL. So, of course, that got us thinking, which players in the 2024 class would we like to play with in the game? And joining us now to give us his picks is 24-7 Sports National Recruiting Analyst Chris Singletary. Chris will start on offense with the new number one running back in the country, Taylor Tatum. Uh, why is he one of your picks? What makes him so special? Well, even though I'm older than most of these guys that I work with, I did play the game in terms of uh, college football back when it was called Bill Walsh. <laughs> they probably don't even remember that. But on the game, you have to have a home run hitting running back. And that's what I see in Taylor Tatum, a guy that not only can uh, run between the tackles, but can get to the corner, sub uh, 22 uh, in the 200 meters. And so you got to have that home run hitter, that game changer. And that's what I like about his ability. I also like his vision. Then you couple that with also him being a, a high level track athlete and a baseball player. So now you have a guy that's a tremendous overall athlete. So that's what I really love about Taylor Tatum. I really would love to play with him on the game. I think he would be a game changer. Also has the ability to catch the football out of the backfield. And something that I'm sure if I played a guy like, like, like Blair, he wouldn't cover the back. He wouldn't know to cover him out of the backfield. So I would <laughs> hit him with a few dump downs and let Taylor Tatum uh, take it to the house. Uh-oh. Okay, I need Blair's wow. answer to that. But uh, first, obviously, Blair, quarterback, the most fun position to control in any game. You are going with Ole Miss commit Damon Williams. Why do you think he'd be a fun one? Well, he's outside the top 10 in the quarterback rankings in this 2024 class, but he's got all the traits and all the ratings that make quarterback an entertaining and a fun position to control in the NCAA game. You know, you look at uh, the controller here, This he would wear this out, right? He would wear out the, the left joystick with the way he moves. He's got a ton of wiggle. I love his acceleration. I love his speed. I love his elusiveness. 
And there are two reasons why you play this game, right? It's to entertain yourself and to win, right? You want to compete against the Chris Singletary's and beat them. And this player loves to compete. He went out to the state of California last year, beat Malachi Nelson, the five-star quarterback that was headed to USC. In state, he won a state championship and beat Dylan Rayola twice on the field last year as Basha beat Chandler. So yeah, this controller here, Damon Williams, this wiggle, this this left joystick, he would wear it out. I'd probably need two or three of these next year when, <laughs> when he's in the game. He's a fun, fun guy to play with. When you're beating Singletary too. Uh, okay, we know four well, verts. You can't be picking sides now. You've got to be impossible. I am Switzerland. I'm five. just I'm just here to cause some chaos, okay? Uh, four verts, guys. That's a go-to play for any gamer. Perfect for the next offensive player on your list, Chris. That's Ohio State commit Jeremiah Smith. How much fun would it be to use him? Oh, it'd be a, a cheat code. You put him on the outside, you put him in the slot. I'm going to line up three receivers to one side, put him by himself so the safety uh, on, on, the, on the video game can't play over the top, and then we're just going to go to work. We're going to do a lot of jump balls. We're going to do a lot of mossing. When you talk about this young man, you're talking about a high-level track athlete, just won two state championships a couple weeks ago running track. When you see him in person, you have to understand the appreciation you have for his size, his catch, his catch radius, his wingspan, and he's still growing. I hate to say this because I don't want people to really take it that far, but every time I see him in the seven-on-seven uh, in person, I just keep getting pictures of Julio Jones in my mind. That's how big he is and he's still scratching the surface. And so when you're playing with a guy like on, on the video game, it doesn't matter who your quarterback is. You throw jump balls, you throw slants, you throw comebacks, and then you just formation teams to death. See, you got a guy like this, it doesn't matter how the play is called, he's gonna make you right. All right, let's go to the defense. And one of the most fun plays in the old NCAA football games, engage eight, which personally I think sounds like a madman play, but to each their own. Blair, Sammy Brown is your pick, the top linebacker in the country. Why do you think he'd be a popular player in the new game? Well, first of all, I'd be able to counter Taylor Tatum and whatever Chris Singletary is trying to do. Chris, you're not going to be able to run between the tackles when I have Sammy Brown. And the other side, which is the hit stick right here, uh, I'm going to lay the wood on him. He's got the physicality. He's got the, the, the tenacity to be able to clean up inside the box. And then he's over here chopping down trees with his father, so you know he's got awareness. That rating's going to be off the charts. Sammy Brown will control the box. He'll be my top defensive prospect. I won't control anyone up front. Uh, I'll let the big guys do their thing in the trenches, but then I'll be able to roam free with Sammy Brown, chase down Taylor Tatum, go and cover the slot when I have to. Uh, that He will be a, a ton of fun to play with in that 2024 edition of the game. We have a very competitive group here. You guys both know we have the ping pong tables here. We're supposedly getting a PlayStation or whatever. When it arrives, both of you need to come and face off here, okay? Uh, Chris, oh, your defense. Yep, yep. Your defensive pick is Elijah Rushing, the top edge in the 2024 class. He's six foot six with speed off the edge. What would make what makes him another popular choice? Pressure in the pocket, shutting down the run game. It doesn't matter if you put him at left end, right end, if you put him at the three technique, he can do it all. Again, at six foot six, 250 pounds, over an 80 inch wingspan, and the ability to run the, run the hoop to bend. So now you got a guy to keep DeMond Williams in the pocket and flushing to one side. Then if you want to run the ball, you can put him in the middle and he can shut it down from there. He is one of the few guys, again, and Blair said that he wouldn't ever play with a guy in the interior, he's one of the guys that you play with on the D-line because you always want to move him around and never let the office know where he's going to align because he's such a valuable player in terms of his playmaking ability. And he's just scratching the surface from a standpoint of physical maturity. By the way, Rushing just scheduled his first official visit to UCLA this weekend, so that's something to keep an eye on. All right, before we let Chris go, we all know he played college ball in the 90s at Michigan. NIL wasn't around yet, but if it was, we could have seen your name, Chris, in EA Sports College Football. So, Blair, let's go back in time. How much would you have just loved to play as linebacker Chris Singletary? I think it would be a ton of fun, right? I, I probably need a little bit more speed in the rating department, right, to get him out into space and do some things. But it, he'd be a lot of fun. And, and Chris, I think that's going to be one of the first things I do when this game comes out <laughs> next summer is I'm going to create every one of our team members over at 24-7 Sports, put them out into different teams and see who kind of stacks up the best. And I think you, my friend, will probably have the – 
the best stat, uh, statistical output of anyone. I hope so. I appreciate the compliment. And I would just love to see not only how our guys uh, transcend and play, but what teams they would actually choose to want to be a part of. All right. Well, there we go. Nice job, Blair. We're all friends again. Thanks, Chris, for joining us. And for all the best college football and recruiting news and insights, purchase an annual VIP membership with 24-7 Sports. You can use the QR code on your screen. It'll take you straight to our website where you can sign up. You'll also get access to Paramount+. Plus. I'll be committed to the University of Michigan. I'd like to commit to the University of Notre Dame. All right, today we head to State College, Pennsylvania, where our newest 24 sports recruit of the weekend competed in the final Elite 11 Regional, and that is Penn State quarterback commit Ethan Grunkemeyer, our recruit of the weekend. Grunkemeyer received the lone invite to the Elite 11 final this past weekend and was named by our Brian Doan as one of the top five performers of the event. Blair, he's only been committed to the Nittany Lions for a few days. What do you like about his game that helped him secure that golden ticket to the final, which goes on later this summer? He looks big. He looks like a strong kid with an easy delivery. He can get the ball downfield and make throws to the opposite sideline. Uh, I really like his repetition and athletically he can scamper past the line of scrimmage when he has to to pick up some of those tough yards. He does really well to plant his feet in the pocket. He gets adequate torque without losing a lot of that in sync ability up front and, and with his arm. Uh, I really love his mechanics. So Penn State gets a player at the quarterback position this late in the cycle uh, when a lot of the players at that position are, have already come off the board. I think it's a significant one. I, I think you take this if you're a Nittany Lion fan and Grunkemeyer, uh, I think, will be opening up some eyes at the Elite 11 Finals in LA next month based on what we saw from him this past weekend as the 24-7 Sports Recruit of the Week. I love that player comp to Taylor Heineke. Gutsy, gutsy player there. Uh, congrats to you, Ethan, and best of luck at the Elite 11 Final. Let's get to some viewer questions now, but before we do, guys, help us get to 100 likes on the video. We already are there. I was just told we're already there, so good job. Let's, let's keep going. Um, our first viewer question, Blair, from P. Chambers out of Ryan Wingo, Jeremiah Smith, and Mike Matthews, who do you think is most likely to commit to Georgia? Well, I'd be really compelled to say Jeremiah Smith, considering that he's committed to Ohio State and seems to be flirting with a number of other programs. Uh, but Mike Matthews has some buzz there. Uh, you know, I was with Dylan Rayola last week uh, during his college showcase on the day that he committed to the Georgia Bulldogs, and that was one of the first names that he mentioned. I think Mike Matthews being a Florida or a, being a Georgia native gives him that appeal to be able to stay closer to home. And now that uh, Dylan Rayola is on board, I think he makes him a, a huge and a top priority for him in this class. So out of those three, I think Mike Matthews is probably the most uh, percentage wise, the, the most likely to end up with the Bulldogs, considering that Jer Jeremiah Smith would still have to decommit from mm -hmm. the Ohio State Buckeyes. All right, our next question from Cade B. What do you attribute to the lack of recruiting momentum for USC? I think they have just been all in on the transfer portal. And, you know, for whatever reason, the high school recruiting just hasn't been up to speed or hasn't been up to maybe what we would expect USC to be, right? Uh, Georgia and, and the schools like that, they've been able to balance both, and they can because of you know, the, the amount of recruiting pool that they have, the amount of spending that those recruiting departments have. Uh, USC has been trying to rebuild their roster and, and do it quickly. I think Lincoln Riley is in a no wait mode, right? He has to win now. And, you know, for the most part, I think they've been attacking their roster and figuring out, okay, we need a receiver, right? Jordan Addison's gone. We need to go get uh, Dorian Singer. Uh, you know, we're missing uh, Tui, Tuli Tui Pulotu is mo moving on to the NFL. Let's go get an Anthony Lucas from A&M. Uh, 
a, a player that will be ready to contribute right away. So I think that's USC's main emphasis now as the summer months begin and we head into the season. I think they are going to be able to pull in some key recruits and, and I think put the, the, the heat up a little bit more on high school recruiting. And, and I would be stunned if they don't finish in that 15 to 20 range when it's all said and done. You know, Although they're far, far away from that right now, I, I think USC will, will certainly be in, in a really good spot heading into the season. All right, and our final question from Hannah G. Blair, if you were to create yourself in the new NCAA game, what position would you play? You know, I, I love playing safety for some reason, right? I, I think, uh, you know, when you play these video games, uh, you try to find a spot that you're really comfortable with. And, and for me, I love being in the back end of the secondary and kind of just scanning the field, you know, cleaning up and run support. I love piling up tackles. I, I call a lot of safety blitzes, right? So I'm already, uh, I already have my assignment. I know what I'm going to be doing on that play. Uh, so yeah, g give me safety on the offensive side of the ball. You know, give me a position like tight end, right? Where I can kind of wiggle through and, and, and get by linebackers like Sammy Brown and, you know, come up with some key receptions over the middle of the field. But yeah, I, I know a lot of people probably say quarterback or a lot of people are probably going to say linebacker, but, you know, give me those obscure positions where I can kind of make an impact my own way. No, I love your answer, Blair, because I've always wanted to be a defensive back. I've never been able to decide safety or corner, but you always want to hit rather than be hit, right? I think the that's... thing about corner, though, is that it's a little bit tough because you're off camera, right? So you have to anticipate things unless you're doing the road to glory mode, which I hope okay. returns because I thought that was a lot of fun and recruits probably loved being able to get recruited and go to a college. And, you know, now they're probably going to integrate the transfer portal and you figure out another place to go to. But, yeah, that's the one thing about corner is that it's off camera. It's a little bit tough to, to make an impact. So, yeah, give me safety. Give me tight end. Give me one of those spots. Yeah. I think it's a lot of fun. We'll go safety, ball hawk style. All right, good stuff, Blair. Great show. Yeah, he's got the controller ready, so Chris Singletary, you better watch out. All right, we'll see you back here Thursday at 5 o'clock Eastern. Until we see you again, keep it locked on the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel and website. Thank you for watching, and have a good night.